This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad it. Welcome to worship. It is wonderful to have you here. A few announcements to call to your attention. Happy Father's Day to all fathers who are worshiping with us. We do have a gift for you. It is on the back table, a very useful uh, multi-purpose utility knife type gift. You'll also see on the back table uh, children's Bibles. If you have any grandkids, uh, that you might want to give them to. They are available. Also, if you would like a very quick overview of the Bible from beginning to end, it's not a bad idea to, to, to page through one of these children's Bibles. It will give you a quick summary of the a whole Bible. And I have to confess, when I went to seminary, Lutheran students did not have to take a biblical content exam, but Presbyterian students did. And uh, they would buy children's Bibles at the end of the year to, to prepare for, for their exams. So it's, it, is a, it is a resource that, that might even help you when you do your own Bible reading to just keep the stories in context. Also, a special welcome to those who are joining our worship service at Freedom Village this afternoon. Next Sunday is our mid-year congregational meeting update. We do have some papers on the back table, papers that you might want to look at before the congregational meeting. They will be included in the congregational report that will be sent out via email this week. But if you want more time to look at them, especially the budget figures and also a proposal regarding the fall schedule, please help yourself to those. They're on your back table on your right as, as you leave. Those are all the announcements I have. Let us begin our worship with the call to worship. Gather us together, O God. No matter where we are, online or here, the same spirit that stirred the water of creation, guide us, O Holy One, in this time of worship. Our opening hymn is hymn number 756, Eternal Father. Savior who 
Are there any children online? I don't think there's any kids here in, in person. Are there any kids online? All right, we've got JD. All right, JD is here. Let me ask you, uh, JD, have you ever been caught in a really bad storm? Um, have you yeah. ever been caught in, oh yeah. So when, when was it? What storm do you remember? Probably just like Maybe you weren't. a lightning storm or something like that. Okay, a lightning storm. Any of your baseball games or sporting events be interrupted uh, from, from a, by a storm? Yeah. Okay, so you've had that happen before. Well, the reason I ask you that is because this morning we hear about Jesus being caught up in a storm, in a storm on the Sea of Galilee. But Jesus was with his disciples, and while they battled the storm, Jesus was asleep in the back of the boat, totally asleep. And the disciples, they woke up Jesus and said, don't you care that we're perishing? And Jesus said, peace, be still. Jesus calmed the waters and the wind and the waves subsided. Now that's a story about Jesus calming the storm of nature. But we sometimes face storms in life. And I know, J.D., that you face them too. It's not just adults that face storms. You have the storms of school, tests that maybe sometimes you don't do on as well as you would like. Friends at school that maybe sometimes are not always as nice to you as you would like. Sometimes you deal with parents that probably have different rules than you would like. And Jamie's laughing. We can laugh at that. There are storms that we face. But what I want you to remember is that Jesus is in the boat with us in the storms of life. Just as Jesus was in the boat with those disciples on the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus calmed the storm. And when we talk to Jesus, when we pray to Jesus, our storms can be quieted as well. Well, thank you, J.D., for, for joining us for worship. Our service continues with our liturgy. The grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Wind of the Spirit, move fresh as we worship and fill us with hope every day. Breath of creation, blow life in our being and gift us with purpose, we pray. So our life is filled with meaning and love is what we're breathing in the wind of the Spirit. The Lord is with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our worship will continue with our appointed readings. The Old Testament lesson for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost is found in the 38th chapter of the book of Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid the cornerstone when the morning stars came to sing together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst from its womb? When I made the clouds and its garment and the thick darkness of swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said, Thus far you shall come, and no farther. And here shall your proud ways be stopped. The word of the Lord. We will read responsively from Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. May the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe gathering them in from the lands, from east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Be in ships, plying their trade in deep waters. Behold the works of the Lord, God's wonderful works in the deep. A stormy wind arose, which tossed high the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and descended to the depths, their souls melted in their peril. They staggered and reeled like drunkards, and all their skill was of no avail. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, You delivered them from their distress. Sound their storm to a whisper, and silence the waves. Then they were glad when it grew calm, when you guided them to the harbor they desired. Let them exalt you in the assembly of the people, in the council of the elders. Let them sing, hallelujah. The epistle lesson is found in 2 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, beginning at the first verse. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. On a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now, it is, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. 
we are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, in hardships, in calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, yet are true, as unknown, yet are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as po poor, yet making many rich, and as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak to you as children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Congregation may stand for our gospel acclamation. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat, so the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The gospel of our Lord. Congregation may be seated. So raise your hand if you have ever been in a life-threatening storm. Raise your hand. Oh yeah, at sea? Okay. Once it happened to me on a small sailboat in the Caribbean, and the captain couldn't get the sail down. Another time, it was right outside of St. Mark in all places, in my car where this horrible storm came through, toppling trees everywhere. So I think, I and I'm sure all of you, can understand the disciples' frustration and fear as they wake up Jesus, saying, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Have you ever found yourself saying those words or similar words in the midst of a storm, a natural storm, or simply a storm of life? Storms can come up so quickly, unpredictably, threatening the very life we know and cherish. Today's gospel takes place on the Sea of Galilee, that sea is about 680 feet below sea level. 
It is surrounded by hills as high as 2,000 feet. There is a dramatic difference between the temperatures on the shoreline and the surrounding hills that cause funneling type winds to often blow through the area, whipping up waves in a relatively shallow sea. Sometimes these storms pass quite quickly. In hearing this story, I used to believe that the disciples woke Jesus up wanting him to do something dramatic, to calm the storm. That's what he did after all. I focused, especially in my younger years, on the miracle. But now, I often wonder, what did Jesus' followers expect him to do? What were they thinking? Beyond simply being frustrated that, that while they were dealing with these high winds and waves that were crashing into the boat, that they might be swamped. What did they expect Jesus to do? Maybe they just wanted him to wake up and help them bail the water before it sank their boat. Matthew and Luke's gospel share this story quite similarly to what we read in Mark. When Jesus asks, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? The storm has already passed. Likewise, in Luke, only Matthew's gospel does Jesus question their faith before, before he actually calms the storm. Regardless, in all three gospel accounts, Jesus' followers ask each other who this is, that even the sea and the wind would obey him. Maybe, just maybe, they were even more unsettled after the storm had been calmed by Jesus. As Mark's gospel and the other gospel accounts have them asking, who is this? Who is this that should be able to do such a thing? Mark's gospel tells us that they reacted with awe, with great awe. And awe is defined as reverential respect mixed with fear or worship. Each of the gospels portrays Jesus' followers being amazed and having similar feelings, terror, and amazement at the same time, or one or the other. So struggling, struggling to make sense out of who Jesus is, is not new to our time. It was very much a part of the disciples' time with Jesus. I wonder about Jesus' question, why are you afraid? Why do you still have no faith. Nadia Bowles Weber suggests it feels like an accusation, but maybe Jesus did not ask this as an accusation, not as a rhetorical question, but rather as an invitation, an invitation to reflect where God is in the midst of the storms that we face, inviting the disciples uh, what it means to be alive on the other side of a situation that they thought might kill them. For us, that situation might be a divorce, an illness, the death of a loved one, the loss of a job, depression, a new school, a new home. Those kind of situations sometimes feel as though they are going to kill us. So if and when we survive those situations, maybe we are encouraged to ask ourselves the same question, where was my faith? Where was God? 
What did I fear? Where is your faith? Maybe it is really an invitation to reflect on what it means to be a child of God, because being a child of God does not give us special dispensation for an easier, storm-free life. Now, New Age and prosperity gospel thinking might suggest that if we only had enough faith, if we could just think positively enough, we will always and only draw good things to us. But you and I know, life often does not work that way. Bad things eventually happen to all of us. Thinking that storms won't happen, thinking enough positive thoughts, thinking if only we had more faith, will eventually disappoint. There is no formula for storm-free life, but faith is a way for finding meaning, purpose, hope, and love, even in the midst of the storms of life. Nadia Bowles Weber suggests you may be in a personal storm thinking, I'm perishing here, God. But when you look back on it, six months later, or even years later, you find yourself still alive, that the world and even your world didn't really end. See, see, she suggests waiting to get to the point where she can trust God, even in the moment, and not just in retrospect, months or even years later. But sometimes it just doesn't seem possible. Regardless, today's gospel is a powerful reminder that no matter what we face in life, Jesus is in the boat with us. As we gather under this roof for the journey of life, the journey of faith, it won't always be easy. Maybe that's one of the reasons we feel we need to come here. Today's gospel begins with Jesus saying, let us go across to the other side. That is to detach from the familiar shores of Capernaum toward the strange and foreign shores, to hostile shores, to uncomfortable shores. Willie Duane Francois suggests that, this, that the struggling moral health of America depends on having the courage to see the other, to stare at the face of the other and find transcendence in difference because life is greater than our differences because love, love fights the politics of division, love disrupts conventional rules, Love shrinks the distance between shores. The authentic embrace of our differences may challenge our values. Let's face it, sometimes Jesus' words challenge our thoughts and our behavior. But look at that little phrase right at the start of today's gospel. Look carefully at the words. The disciples take Jesus with them in the boat just as he was. Just as he was. I wonder if that might lead us to take Jesus just as he is. Rather than trying to define him or make him, as we would have him be. Can we simply rely on the word, the example, the wisdom of Jesus? Because he alone is always in the same boat with us.
In Jesus' name. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, you gather your people from east and west, north and south. 
we pray for the mission of the church throughout the world, that your steadfast love may be known to all people. Lord, in your mercy, you laid the foundations of the earth and the waters are the womb of creation. The morning stars sing your name and all creation shouts for joy. We pray for your blessed creation that it may continue to flourish and magnify your glory. Lord, in your mercy, and keep watch over all nations. We pray for countries experiencing violence, hunger, and unrest. Guide worldwide and local community organizations in their efforts to establish safety and justice. Lord, in your mercy, you are close to the brokenhearted and near to those in distress. We pray for those who ex are experiencing oppression. Liberate us from the systems and chains that bind us. Remove the barriers that separate us from one from another. Lord, in your mercy, you dwell with us in this faith community. We pray for our leaders and elders. Grant them knowledge, patience, and kindness that through their leadership, you may be exalted in this assembly. Lord, in your mercy, hear now, gracious Father, the prayers for those loved ones who are near to and dear to us that are going through difficult times. We pray, Lord, for the entire Atkins family as Tim continues to be in a coma. We pray, Lord God, for Judy Reif as she prepares for hip replacement surgery. We pray for the Dettinger family as Terry prepares for yet another surgery. With thanksgiving, we pray for Marge Greenwald, for the wonderful recovery that she has made following her fall, even being back to driving. Lord, in your mercy. Good and gracious God, we pray for those who are involved in replacing our roof. We pray, Lord, that the crew might do a commendable job. We pray that they might be safe. And we give you thanks, Lord, for the outpouring of support that has already come through the Under This Roof campaign. Lord, in your mercy, your love endures in all situations. On this Father's Day, we pray for those who are fathers or wish to be fathers, for those with broken or strained relationships, for those who are missing their fathers and for fathers who have lost children. Bless and strengthen them. Lord, in your mercy, we lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. The peace of the Lord be with you all. I invite you to share God's peace in a socially appropriate manner. Invite the congregation to stand as we prepare our hearts to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. We gather together and we share this meal because the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus, Swim of God, worthy. 
Come now to the table of the Lord. You may receive the host from me or self-serve, and grape juice and wine is available in the pre-filled glasses. The grape juice is available in the center glasses. All are welcome. Now strengthened by the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Our closing hymn is hymn number 763. Lord. Thanks be to God. Stay to all men and please help yourself to a gift on the back table. <laughs> 